One of the most interesting things we've learned even in recent weeks is that the vaccines were never tested to block transmission. Um, so the whole concept of banning an unvaccinated person from an airplane, is that was moot, so to speak, because if the vaccine only protected yourself, and we can debate whether or not that was true, and if Pfizer is now admitting, no, no, we never said that it stopped transmission. In fact, they did absolutely say that. There was no rationale for keeping people off a plane other than political vengeance, and that is why none of the establishment wants to have a full hearing of this. Exactly. And, and, and their whole case crumbles uh, on that scientific basis. And also the chief epidemiologist for the public health agency under oath said they did not recommend to the government that they bring in these travel mandates. The top people in the Department of Transport, through which the uh, court case was, was started in the beginning, testified on the road that they did not recommend to bring in uh, this travel mandate. So their whole case has crumbled. And I guess you're right that because it had crumbled on its scientific merit and because there was very little to argue on the constitutional side of things, because it's clear in mm. se Section 7 of the Act, se Section 6 of the Act uh, of, of the Charter, that they had to therefore devise means and ways to ensure that this didn't go forward because they would lose. You know, a lot of institutions failed us in the last two years. Our democracy depends on checks and balances. I mean, I'll list a few of them. The official opposition did not oppose. None of the official oppositions in, in any province or territory opposed in any meaningful way. The media turned into propagandists, not skeptics asking curious questions. The colleges of physicians and surgeons prosecuted doctors who dared to have a second opinion. Police departments became bully enforcers of bizarre rules. But the courts, Premier, the courts, I think, fell down hardest of all. When I went to law school, the Charter of Rights was held up as a, a sacred document, second only to the Bible for its holiness and its centrality to our Canadian character. And yet here is it was the associate chief judge of the federal yes. court. Is that right? Who said, yes. no, no, not important. There's no public interest here. No, that's moot. It ended a few weeks ago. So no need to have a hearing on it. And I note that our Supreme Court of Canada has not ruled on a single lockdown matter. I guess they're on vacation. They had other things to do these past two years. I think the courts have given themselves a black eye. And let me say one more thing. I'd love your reaction to this. One of the concepts of our courts is that you get your day in court. Even if you yeah. have a goofy claim, a wacky claim, a hopeless claim, unless it is purely a vexatious lawsuit designed purely to abuse the system, which is extremely rare, by the way. Everyone gets yes. their day in court, even people with hopeless causes. And you know, it's important because they, let them have their day in court and let the judge rule against them and let the judge explain why. And, and they can at least say, well, I played the game and I lost under the rules, but at least I was allowed to play the game. And this judge, this associate chief judge yesterday said, no, we're not even going to give you your day in court. We're too busy. This is moot. And two years of lockdowns and pandemics, oh, it's suddenly not relevant. And I think millions of people are saying, well, what's the bloody point of a court then? What is the point of a court? It has more important files to work on, does it? It has more grave civil liberties violations to work on, does it? And so it's not just these other institutions I mentioned that have a black eye, the opposition parties, the media, the police, the colleges of physicians and surgeons. It is the courts and the judges themselves who have lost, who have lost the support and the love of Canadians. And I put myself in the category of someone who's deeply disappointed in the law. And I say this is someone who used to be a lawyer. Uh, Ezra, you make such a such a wonderful point. I've done over 300 interviews in the last 300 and so days, live uh, uh, rallies, freedom rallies, and so on. And one of the things I used to defend, and I have another one tomorrow on Vancouver Island, and one of the things I used to defend in the question and answer period, which was like an hour and a half to two hours, I would speak for 40 minutes, 
And I said to everybody in the audience, hold your questions, hold your comments. I'll stay here if it's all night until everybody asks a question, everybody gives a comment. And one of the things I defended, at the end of the day, I would say to everybody, I have to play the system out because not to do so, I could always be criticized, but you didn't go through the judiciary. You didn't go through the final process where everybody is guaranteed a hearing mm -hmm. on a serious matter. And I cannot now, tomorrow, when I go before people in a live rally, be able to defend all of those arguments that I made. The court has invalidated my argument that I was using that they would be legitimate and hear the case. They mm -hmm. won't even hear the case. And as I said in my my blog entry last night, announcing that the court had ruled against the case, uh, I thought that when, as a, when I joined, when Newfoundland joined Canada in 1949, we were joining a country that respected the Magna Carta, which was really the principle of being able to get redress before an independent judiciary. And now we find these many six, seven, eight, nine hundred years later, a thousand years later, that no longer does the Magna Carta and the foundations of our democracy hold in 2022. Mm -hmm. And that is perhaps the most fundamentally disturbing thing to me, because I get goosebumps. My, I get goosebumps to think that I was part of a system. 51 years ago, this month, I got involved in organized politics. 51 years ago, this almost to this day. And I, I got involved in politics because I thought I was going to be engaged in the process of democracy. Mm -hmm. And now I had to put my name on the line 51 years later and, and argue my point and have it dismissed without even being argued before what mm -hmm. I thought was a legitimate superior court. And so, yeah. and by the way, yeah. I also take issue with the... Uh, and you listed them all, except the think tanks, right. the so-called think tanks in Canada, you know, which sort of stand mm -hmm. apart from academia, mm -hmm. stand apart from the mm -hmm. press, stand apart from everybody, and are supposed to be there as the great oracles, right? Mm -hmm. Your program, and you as a person, and Rebel News, and several other groups that have arisen as a result of this in the last two years, have been the only bulwarks to defend freedom in our nation. And, and, you know, I applaud you and I applaud your organization for standing up and having to go to court yourself to even get to a press conference. But mm. this is what it's come to. And Ezra, we cannot stop now. Yeah. We must take this. And we're going to appeal this if we can to the Federal Appeal Court and then to the Supreme Court of Canada if necessary. We're taking this all the way so that we hopefully, by doing this, embarrass some of these last judges to take mm -hmm. a second look at this and understand mm -hmm. that justice is not being served right now. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday I do a monologue. Usually it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix. And in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for 8 bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways because... We rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.